idea that we're now shooting season five is truly extraordinary. We shot our first four seasons in Los Angeles and we wanted to change it up. You are the chosen ones! If you want a location that epitomizes a tough as nails location, then you really can't look any further than Hamilton, Ontario, a place known as the Hammer, where there's a lot of tough people. And for the first time ever, we allowed Canadians to be on Tough as Nails. Well, I'm Canadian, and it's about time that we're put on the map. People are going to see what Canadians bring to the table. Hey, everybody! Yeah! Representing Canada right here! <laughs> the people they're seeing on camera are the people that we see in our neighborhood every day. Our mothers and fathers, brothers, sisters. They're real people in real life who are real tough. There isn't a job that I have not done or not willing to tackle. And I'm here to get the job done. I'm a firefighter with the city of Edmonton. I'm a union iron worker in Los Angeles. I'm a CO2 technician. I am a motorcycle builder. I'm a tool maker. It's not just about being the overall winner. If a team wins a challenge, each team member is going to get paid. Nobody goes home empty-handed. Team of awesomeness! This season, I can honestly say we have the fittest, toughest, most highly skilled group of contestants on Tough as Nails that we've ever had. In the end, only one of you is going to win the $200,000, a brand new Ford truck, and the coveted Tough as Nails belt. I am here to prove that Mama still got it. I am that underdog and I'm gonna prove, you know, these little guys, you gotta watch out. I'm unassuming. You don't think I'm a fierce little warrior, but uh, watch your back. I'm pretty fierce. I'm a fighter. That's why I'm gonna win. That's why that's my belt. It's high octane, highly emotional content that'll make you cry, that'll make you laugh. This is gonna be the best thing they've ever seen on TV. You'll be hooked. You'll be there for the whole season. Hello, my name is William Gosset, and I'm with Paramount Veterans Network and a proud Army veteran. I would like to welcome you to another exciting virtual Coffee with Vets. Today, we have competitors from CBS Tough as Nails Season 5 who are also veterans. We also welcome a very special guest, Karen Kraft, Chair of Veterans and Media and Entertainment, an organization that unites U.S. military veterans working in or aspiring to work in media and entertainment. Karen is a fellow Army veteran and she will be moderating today's session. Please welcome our dear friend and Paramount VetNet patron, Karen Craft. Thank you, thank you, William. Go Army, I really appreciate the warm welcome. Great to see everybody up here. Really happy to introduce this very special crew. I appreciate the introduction and I'm excited to introduce what I would say is probably the most special part of the cast these veterans, these military veterans. Um, Tough as Nails is a competition series which celebrates everyday Americans who consider the calluses on their hands a badge of honor. For this first time, for this upcoming season, the show filmed in the Canadian steel town of Hamilton, Ontario, features essential workers from both the United States and Canada who are ready to test their strength, endurance, life skills, and mental toughness in challenges that take place in real world scenarios. That sounds badass as it possibly can as a contest, but probably no contest for the people I'm about to introduce you to because they are all former military. Let's start out with Akila. Welcome, Akila. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your background in the military, please? How's it going, Karen? Um, well, I'm an Army Reserve veteran. I served eight years. I did one tour in Afghanistan. Wow. Um, I come from a long line of uh, veterans. My grandma served, my uncle served, my grandpa served, everybody served. So I thought I might just do it too. Oh, that's exciting. And did they send you great care packages? Did you oh, rate yeah, I got nice best? goodies. Yeah, <laughs> they understood. <laughs> what a great experience. Well, and where are you from originally? I'm from Fort Dodge, Iowa. Small town in Iowa, farm town, born and raised. All right. Well, the Army Reserve must have been an exciting experience. That's what I did as well. It was yeah. great. Awesome. Well, great to have you here today. Next up is Kenji. Hey, Kenji, how you doing? Tell us a little bit about yourself and where you're from. Hi, so nice to meet you. Um, I am Kenji Ngo, and I'm from Delaware, Ohio, and I'm in the Navy, um, the only Navy out of the two. Um, I served my tour, and when everything was up, uh, I was one of the few that uh, ended up being Petty Officer Second Class in less than three years, so I'm pretty proud of that. Oh, yeah, and I feel like that's amazing. Yeah, and I feel like uh, the military had a big deal in uh, preparing me for, you know, all the challenge and tough and tough as nails. 
Well, we're excited to dive in a little bit more of those experiences. Thanks, Kenji. Jessica Hayes. Jessica, let's hear a little bit about you. <clears throat> Hi, everybody. I'm Jessica Hayes, and I live in Cedar Park, Texas. I'm a very, very proud Army veteran. Um, yeah, I served yeah. almost... Yeah. Go <laughs> Army! Um, I served almost four years. I did a tour in Iraq. Um, yeah. And it was the best, best thing I ever did for myself. I saw you were an engineer. Is that right? I was, I was a bridge engineer, actually 12 Charlie's man. It's a very cool little niche component of the army. A lot of people don't even know that we even exist, but it's a very, very cool, uh, part and it's very crucial to, to the army. It's exciting. It is. Well, congratulations, all three of you, first of all, for getting through service and did so well, accelerated. All of you had great careers. And then you decided, hey, now that I'm done with that, I'm going to leave all my military behind. I'm going to jump in a reality competition show. Is that what really happened? Is it just like that? Is it just like, hey, you know, instead of taking the dog for the walk today, I'm going to go compete? Listen, what to be fair, it's been a hot minute since I've been out. <laughs> <laughs> I was really, it's been like over 10 years. So it was, an epic time when I was really young, but my life has changed so much since then. So the one thing that was most appealing about the show was going back to something more structured, more competitive, more um, team oriented, like um, the military. And how'd you discover this show? I actually had a friend at the gym. Um, I, I go to one of the gyms here in town and she watched it. And she's like, hey, you would be so good on this show. You should really think about applying. Um, and so I was like, oh, there's no way, like, whatever, I, I'll think about it. And then it just kept going in my brain. And then I finally applied. Yeah. That's the spirit of uh, the military, right? Love the team, love the competition, love the push. Yeah. And right now, uh, I own a small business with my husband and it's a very small team. So I really, that was one thing that was really exciting was being able to work with a bigger team to accomplish really great things. And I, I missed that for a long time. Mm, I bet. I think we all do, which is why it's so great to see you working with so many great vets here. Kenji, yeah. how about you? How did you discover this show and decide, were you at the gym as well? Oh, no. Um, I, I I came across by watching the first season and um, after the first or second episode, my wife and I looked at each other and, and we both knew that because I'm a jack of all trade and because I was able to do a lot of different things um, throughout my whole life, uh, but at the time I apply, I was uh, 37. And so I had quite a bit of skill underneath me and my wife and I said, you know, if you just apply and you get in, you might do all right. And I said, you know, that's a good point. So I went ahead and apply. And two years later, that's when things got started. And it was just a, an amazing journey. Wow. Good for you, Navy. We're going to explore the two-year gap in a minute, but I'm going to round out this real quick group. Akila. Uh, you know, I heard about the show from my boss. My boss is actually on season three of Tough, Tough as Nails, uh, Kalimba Edwards, Captain Kalimba Edwards. Let me get that right for she, for she get on me. Um, yeah, my boss, I was in the jungle in Costa Rica and she texted me and said, you'd be great for this show. And I was like, I guess I might, I don't know. And, uh, I applied and then went through all the steps and all the burpees, all the everything to get on there. And, and it's amazing. I see everybody laughing at that. So your gym is Costa Rica, the jungles of Costa Rica specifically. No, I was on vacation having fun. <laughs> So, Kayla, what was your military occupation? I was, a material, I was a mechanic, and then I reclassed to a material handler. Um, a lot of forklifts, a lot of calamars, stuff like that. Breaking down bases in Afghanistan. That's fun. Yeah. <laughs> it is actually <laughs> great. I love building and I love tearing down. It's fun. I was you in know? the engineers, Jessica, so I was in the 464, so I get it. It was always fun. I was like, we'll take it up and take it down. It's fun to see the great Kenji. But you you were a diesel mechanic. Is that right in the Navy? Did I get that right? Yes, um, I was an engine man uh, that got moved around. Uh, I basically worked below deck and above deck, uh, taking care of the Marines on the USS New Orleans. Uh, so I was in charge of a generator and then some auxiliary uh, equipment and then small um, uh, 
inflate small inflatable draft uh, raft that I was in charge of. So diesel, uh, small engine, hydraulics, you know, all of that. Right. So it's fair to say all three of you had good working experience in building, tearing down, figuring things out, right? Determining, working with your hands and mind, uh, solution oriented on, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you only have what you haul in and you got to haul it all back out. So, yeah, you make everything work. All right. That's great. So now you guys applied for the show. What made you decide to say, yes, I've got excited. I was recommended. I did the application, which was a two year gap, I guess. Can do you want to start, Jessica, on that and then just say, OK, I get the invite. Walk me through that process. <laughs> Yeah, I actually, I kind of laugh at the beginning of my story. So when I applied, I like had it in my brain for so long. And then uh, one day I got in a fight with my husband at work and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do this for me. I'm going to go, I'm going to take all this time off. And I applied and I sent this video and literally months had passed and it's all I could think about. I just wanted it so bad. And um, I, one day uh, at work, just by asking, I sliced my hand open. And I went to the urgent care and I was sitting there on the table and a nurse practitioner was stitching me up and, and she's like, God, you're so tough. And that, and I'm not even joking at that very moment, I got the email from casting for tough as nails. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. Like, it just felt like it was just, it was just my destiny to do it. And so, yeah, I pursued, um, I was actually in contention for season four. I didn't make the cast for season four. And so I just kept training. I kept preparing. I kept, you know, doing everything I could. And then season five came around and yeah. And then we made it. Yeah. Wow. That's quite a story. Talk about destiny. <laughs> yeah. For, and I actually, funny story is I, I do a lot of kitchen remodels. And so at the time when I left for season five, um, I was actually working on the same, uh, the nurse practitioner that was stitching me up at that very moment, I was working on her kitchen. <laughs> probably a good thing you got a good right a good stitch then yeah right yeah, exactly. It's a butterfly, right? <laughs> exactly Kenji jump in here tell us a little bit about when you got the application process and the news well it's funny that Jessica felt um like it was her destiny to be on season five and it was how I felt too like all my life everything every job that I've had up to this point has basically led up to this one thing that I'm supposed to do. And once I got accepted, it was like, okay, I'm going to start training for it. And then once I made that commitment, uh, I just, I went with it and it was nothing but me making on a show. And I did everything possible to try to get it. Uh, and just like Jessica said, I felt like this was my next step in my life. And this was meant to be. Oh, wow. Destiny calls twice in a row, three times, Akila. No, <laughs> not at all. Not at all. You know, at the time when I when I uh, when my captain recommended this show to me, I was just coming off of a high of getting my black belt in jujitsu, a two time world champion. You know, my mind was on a different type of competition. And uh, she recommended the show. I was like, why not? You know, what's the worst they can say? No. So I kept going through the steps and then week after week after week, they just kept sending me more stuff to do. And I turned over to my wife and I was like, man, I think I'm going to make this show. I'm going to want to start getting ready for this show. <laughs> She's like, oh uh, yeah, I think you should, you know, and I didn't know I was going to make the show until I got there. I had no idea. Well, we I all, we all did. You yeah. were, you were not selected until you were selected. Right. Wow. All right. It's a little bit like going through advanced training, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. And then a little bit, look to your left, look to your right. Yeah, correct. Wow. That's exciting. That's got to bring out both the nerves and also the joy of just competition and pushing yourself. Right. Right. So now you're on the show, you just got selected. Walk me through a little bit um, about how the military actually just give me one or two things about how the military service, your career helped you specifically work with the show, cope with the show, progress with the show? So um, it did help me a lot uh, on the show because mentally I was already prepared. I've been trained in very uh, mental toughness. Uh, you know, I had to go through battle station, uh, little sleep, lots of training, uh, dealing with others, uh, dealing by myself, working with equipment and all that. So 
I say that, you know, even though I'm a jack of all trade, the military had half of everything that made me successful and able to move and you know, be accepted and then to be able to do uh, how far, however far I got in the show because the other half was military trained, the discipline, the mental toughness and the ability not to give up. And that was something that was crucial in, in, the, in the show. The ability not to give up, that is really drilled in our heads, right? You can do it, just keep pushing. Yeah. Akila? Keep pushing. Hey, I'll piggyback on that. I think I think the biggest thing was the ability to not give up, no matter what the challenge is. Um, also, the little sleep, uh, a little bit of the isolation, you know, not talking to your family, not seeing your family, um, and then just being part of a team, you know, just being around other people that you don't know from all walks of life and uh, making the best out of it. Love that. Jessica? Because that is true. <laughs> feel like you do meet people from right. You just have... You don't pick your friends there. They're put next to you and you figure out, yeah. right? you figure it out quick. Yeah. Jessica? Yeah. I mean, I think every aspect, and I always said during the process of filming is that it is a lot like the, the military. I mean, you're told, you know, it's so scheduled. It's so regimented. They have food for you. You're isolated. You know, it's very much, you don't know what's going to happen the next day. You don't know what you're doing. You try to be as prepared as possible. And it's very similar to the military because you just don't, you have to just fall in line and do what you're told and know that like, whatever happens, I have to make the best of it. And I have to keep pushing. I can't give up. I just, I just have to keep going, um, you know, and working with other people. I think Akila said it the best is that, you know, you're working with people from all different walks of life. You're trying to understand them. Somebody you've just met, you have to understand that you have to accomplish this together. And so it, there's a little bit of growth there, but I think the military probably gave us the best training possible to adapt to that. Isn't it funny? I, how I 100% agree. You do I that? Totally. Yep. So we got a consensus from all three of you on this one. Before yeah. it was Jessica and Kenji, it was destiny to be here in Kilo. Eh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but this one was great. And I was saying, um, there's a weird dichotomy in the military, right? Where you do fall in line, like you said, Jessica, and you just have to, you learn and you just adapt, but there's this creative role within that role. I mean, within that position, right? Here are the tools, here are the resources, get it done, figure it out. It's kind Correct. of like Absolutely. Yeah. And I think if, if I was standing on the outside looking in, I feel like some people and everybody is absolutely amazing on the show, all the contestants, the production team. I mean, honestly, everybody was so great, but you could see the people, you know, all three of us have learned that. And, you know, we don't complain about it. We just know that that's what has to happen. And so I think for other people, that was the first time experiencing that. And they're like, what do you mean we can't eat right now? You know, what do you mean we don't have that? What do you mean I can't go to the store? Whereas I feel like all three of us really understood that going in. Whereas other people, that was like a big reality shock to them. Like, what do you mean? You, you, you got to tell me what I'm going to do. You know, it was just a little bit of a, of a different journey for them because we had already been preparing for that from just from the time that we spent in the military. Mm, right. And I heard this was a top-notch production and you just alluded to that and just said it was quality people, quality production. Did you find each other as vets right away in the, in the select group going through it? Did you realize you were veterans off the bat? For me, um, I did not, I did not know who the other veterans were until, you know, later, later about three maybe three or four episodes and when we were a little bit more relaxed and we can talk um but right off the bat you know we were competitors at first uh but just like jessica said we've already been partly trained right akila did you have a sense someone in the ranks like hmm this feels a little army to me yeah i kind of knew jessica was in the army and uh i kind of felt kenji was in the army when we sat down and played cards i was like yeah this <laughs> dude knows <laughs> this dude knows how to how to pass time by. It's hurry up and wait. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I mean, did my overalls give it away? Yeah, that too. <laughs> that that's the same overall that I was used when I was uh, below deck, and oh, I nice. did, I loved it, and it was something that I've been using almost every job that I do now. Uh, my overalls are my number one go to. Nice. Are these the same overalls that you had in the navy, or <laughs> they are? <laughs> 
I've wow. had them for over 12 years now and I've kept them in tip top shape and you know, it's, it's been with me. And as you see, I have three pairs of them that I still have and it still fits and it's just, I love them. Uh, the amazing part is it still fits 12 years later, Kenji. Yeah. After that, that itself is winning the show. <laughs> when you get yeah. that. That's great. So you're jumping in the competition. You get assigned to your teams. Tell me a little bit really quickly. We've talked a little bit about the skill set, but what is the one thing that you felt that helped you immediately as you were jumping in those first three, four episodes? I feel like um, discipline was, the, I think, the number one overall. It gave me the ability to focus and stay on my tasks. And no matter how hard it got, I was disciplined through my training, you know, to begin with, to get on the show, disciplined enough to say, it doesn't matter what's happening right now. This is a job. You have to finish it. There is no quit in you. Move on and just focus, no matter how hard it is. And that was what something that the military gave me to be able to move forward one step at a time. Kenji, motivational speaker, right on point there. <laughs> yeah. Discipline. Who's next? Akila, Jessica. One thing. Mm. I know it's tough though, right? I'm asking you to distill it right down because there's probably many things, but pick, give me one. I think that the one thing that you'll see throughout the season two for me was, you know, I was blessed with fantastic leadership and, you know, I had great leadership early on. And when we deployed, we were in you know, it was pretty rough back then. And so I had such strong leadership that you realize the importance of it when you don't have it. Mm -hmm. And so going through these challenges, going through these experiences, you really see how important good leadership is, good, clean direction, uh, keeping everybody's morals a little bit higher, making sure everybody's working together. I feel like that's a key component that you will see the success or the demise of some of these challenges. Um, and even through life, not just on the show, but, you know, I, I feel like that was a major component that the army taught me was very important. Great. Okay. So we have discipline focus from Kenji and then from you, Jessica, we have quality leadership. Akila. Oh, Akila. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many things, you know, I'd probably have to say teamwork, my ability to work as a team, um, and also trust. You know, you got to have trust in your teammates that they know what they're doing. They know how to do it. And uh, you leave them to do it. You know, the micromanaging and all that, you know, no, that's not military thing. You know, I give you a task. You do the task. You get it done. I do my task. I get it done. Okay. So it's trust in teammates. That's a good three takeaways. And that's a good segue into the next question. On Tough as Nails, you're part of a team as you progress. This is natural for service members, right? As we just discussed, being part of a team. Um, and how did it, we talked a little bit about how to, it helped you move the team forward, but was this more a team experience for you or a competition then, or was it both? For me, um, it was both. It, it One, you have to be able to separate yourself as a solo competition that you have to go against everybody else. And, and then you have to get out of that mindset and go back into working as a team again. And so the military gave me both, um, both help, uh, give me the ability to be mentally tough on my own, but already gave me the training. So when I am working in a team, I'm used to working with people that I don't know, and I have to trust them. And I have to know that they have my back and I have theirs. And then, and then we just click my team naturally just click. And we just, it just it, it was like destiny. Oh, we're back to destiny. Almost, <laughs> almost full circle. Akila? Yeah. Um, you know, competing in jujitsu, uh, you compete as an individual, you know, but you can't train jujitsu without a team. So I think the competition was more team for me than it was individual. Um, you know, when I win in matches, when I win in fights, it's not me just winning. It's my whole team that's winning. And so, I don't know. For me, the competition was more about the team uh, than, than me individually. Well, Akila, by the way, congratulations. That's an oh, amazing thanks. accomplishment on the black belts. Thank you. Yes, I thought about it, and I'll get there at some point. But uh, You should. You should. Inspired me. Did it as a kid. Yeah. 
How about you? Team competition, both? Yeah, I mean, the team, I feel like the individual, you know, you're always in control of yourself. And so it's really hard to break away from that and get to a team. And like Akila said, like trusting your teammates, being able to adapt, change, overcome, accomplish the challenge. You know, that was, it was really good. I think everybody learned a lot. Um, it's really amazing though, because when you do come together and you feel, and you feel the energy of like a victory or even overcoming little things or little challenges along the way as a team, you're like, we can do this. We got this. You know, it's like a certain camaraderie that starts to evolve and starts to happen. And I feel like that, that was the best part of the, of the show for me. Hmm. Why I absolutely love this show is it's because it's about building things as a team and it's actually using your hands and your mind, right. To work things out. And it's, it's actually creating and watching everybody work together to figure it out. And you do see strengths and weaknesses in each individual. Cause you we're not all hundred percent perfect all the time. Um, you're going to want to edit that out. I don't want my husband to see that, but <laughs> just to be clear, but I, does it surprise you that two of the last four champions were veterans in this last few seasons? Wow. Do you hear that? Me, Go ahead, Kenji. Sorry. For me, it didn't uh, because it, I, as I'm watching season one, you can clearly see the veteran had a little bit of an edge in terms of just motivation, discipline, and not giving up. Um, and as every season go by, every every time I see a, a veteran or a military personnel, something like that, I just know that they have a little bit more of an edge, just a little bit more of an edge that will push them instead of being, you know, eighth place, they might get in fourth. Just, you know, but there are things that it's outside of their control, but for the most part, their military background has helped them in ways that they can't even, can't even, you can't even put in words. I'm so excited for other vets listening to this to hear about that. Jessica, Akila, you feel the same? Yeah, I feel totally. the same. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And you can almost spot, I mean, I, I've always said, like, it's easy to go through these competitions and go through the whole season, not going into overtime or not feeling the pressure of the true competition. But in a lot of these challenges, you can see where that military training just slows them down. And then you're just working and you're just, you just got your head down. We don't get frazzled. And you can spot those traits when times get really tough. Um, and I think that's the big thing with Murph and that's the big thing with Leah, you know, all of those little things where you can see where other people might get a little frazzled, you know, you can see where they, they kicked that in their brain and then they just started working. And that I feel like is a big trait of the military. Mm-hmm. Akila, you want to add to that? No, you know, we're just willing to get dirty. We don't care. We're willing to do the work. Boom. We're willing to do whatever it takes. As long as I get my meal in my shower, I don't care what we do. And mail. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, what was the most fun moment? I know you can't reveal too much right now, but was there a moment that you can share with us as the most fun even? I beat Kenji in cards a oh. couple <laughs> times. Yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's a big reveal. <laughs> that's going to um, be the Kenji. Yeah, I think for me was the overall meeting um, these amazing cast member who I've, you know, I've never met before coming together and we somehow clicked and we became, even though there was two team, we immediately became a family of 12 because we all understood that we all had one common goal. And then we all shared this amazing journey together. And then we overcome we helped each other overcome certain obstacle, certain challenges, and we all came out on the other side together. And that was just something that you can't, you can't, you can never experience uh, anywhere else, but on this particular show that just gives you a new appreciation for, you know, you are the best of the best and you are competing alongside the best of the best. And to me, it was like the Olympic of skilled trade. <laughs> That's a great summary. Akila, Jessica, can you add into that? Yeah, I think that there's, Kenji, I think just meeting Phil, I was like, oh my God, I love you. <laughs> um, but, you know, um, 
at the end of it, when you're looking back on it, it's such a small window of time, but it's so epic. And I think how we, how we grow and learn from it. And even, you know, my respect for other competitors throughout the journey, I feel like it, it changed over time, just in the short time that we were together. So looking back, I think the biggest thing for me, the most momentous was at the end when we're all no matter who won, who punched out, we all at the end were just celebrating. I think the fact that we even made it, you know, you're talking to 12 people out of thousands of people. And it's such a celebratory end to the season, but no matter who won, who got the belt, who punched out, it was like, we all were just so happy to be there And at the end of the season, I think we all just had a different respect for other people, a different outlook on different trades, you know, in in a different perspective. Um, And I think that 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 is really awesome. It sounds it. Keela, Keela. Yeah, I think I think uh, I've never been to Canada before. So that was cool. I kind (laughs) of like that. (laughs) I think, you know, I'm all about the experience. You know, it was a great experience. Um, the challenges were tough. Um, they were some experience for me, you know, um, getting to watch other people, um, whether they were, whether it was, you know, a challenge that was in their trade or whatever, getting, just watching people, you know, excel at what they do. Um, I learned a lot from the show. Yeah. That's exciting to see someone, as Kenji said, the best of the best, really good at a skill, right? Perform it. And you realize that that is an art form in itself, right? It is an art form. Is there one skill that you look back and you look and say, wow, that is completely insane. How that skill to have that. Is there one that can you share it with us? Um, Can I share? Okay. So can I just say welding? Can I say that? Is somebody going to yell at me for saying that? I think so because we're being very general. Just in, this is just you observing (laughs) what skill. So I have a uncle that is a welder and he tried to teach me to weld and he will be, screaming at his TV when he watches it, but I watching people who know how to weld, who know how to use a machine that knows how to weld. It's a whole different ball game. And I feel like I have a totally new respect for those people. Not alluding to anything that's going to happen in this season. But <laughs> you know, I will it's say just, that that is a skill. Right, Jessica, it's just honoring the moment that when you see someone so good at a craft and a skill set, you're just like, I just have to share that. So you don't have to add the specifics, but you just want to just say, take a moment, really appreciate and celebrate that person's skill. Akila, Kenji, you want to throw in something there? Yeah. um, For me, I mean, there was lots of skill that I had developed when I was younger that I thought I would have never used again. And then somehow it resurfaced and I was totally in my element. And uh, like I said, you know what? I got this. I don't need to just let me prove it to you. And just like Jessica said, it was just like, oh, here's my time to shine. I'm going to I'm going to show the world what I can do. And that was something that I did way, way back in my life. Long, you know, when I was a teenager. (laughs) And to Kenji, to add to Kenji, sometimes we would do a challenge and you're like, Kenji, dang it. How do you know all this stuff again? And it was like time and time again, we're like, it would, and it would be such a unique trade, something that's so different. And we, every time Kenji's like, I've done that before. <laughs> that's exciting. What a nice shout out to you, Kenji. Thank oh, you. Thank that you. love for Kenji for sure. Akila, was there one skill set or some a craft that you saw someone doing that you're just like, that is, it doesn't have to be just you. That is so badass. No, I think it was everything. You know, we all do things different. I may turn a wrench this way, they may turn a wrench a different way. I think it, I think it was just everything, you know, I was watching everybody. Um, I was peeping everybody's skills out and uh, I learned a lot. That's the best takeaway. That's really the uh, best. Can, can I finish up uh, with something that Jessica said? Please. And I'm going to go ahead and second that notion with uh, welding. Um, and I thought, uh, that I would never face that. And that was the first time, you know, we had to learn how to weld and we all had to do that. But yes, just like Jessica said, it's something that if you've never done before, it's an amazing skill to watch from the sideline because you literally can see the person showing their trade. And that d- this is what they do on a daily basis. And it just humbles you and it just puts you right in your place and going, yep, I definitely don't know what I'm doing. 
<laughs> um, I just wanted to say you want to um, give a shout out to the crew in production because from the reports I heard from other people working on that, that the veterans were actually got a lot of extra love in terms of just appreciation for your service. Oh, awesome. I definitely yeah, have the, to all, say, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I definitely have to say that, you know, first time ever being on a reality TV show that yes, the production, the sound people, the, the support staff, they were all like amazing. Um, they help us get through the day-to-day -day basis and got us on our feet, uh, kept us in line, keep us going, keeping us, you know, what to do basically. And without them, I don't think the show could ever be as an amazing show as, as it is. Yeah, I, I think a hundred percent. I know, you know, like Kenji said, none of us have really done this much before, but seeing the whole production team, there's a challenge team and even wardrobe. So the lovely wardrobe lady, every morning she would come down. She's like, do you have what you need? Do you have what you need? You know, and it was just every little element in the show was so great because it was very orchestrated. Everybody was there to support us, to support each other, anything you needed. It was just, and those people work so hard. I mean, taking down challenges, building these challenges every day. Um, and I feel like these people carrying around cameras, you know, it's such an understated element of TV, but I feel like those people really make the show what it is. Yeah. That's a real solid skill sets. And it takes a long time to really master those crafts in such a, a effective and yet positive teamwork way, right? Moving it along at a good clip and not stepping yeah. on the toes, but keeping collaboration. Akila, you want to jump in on the production teams? Yeah, I think the production team was amazing. Everybody was amazing. Even down to the therapist, she was amazing. Um, everybody was amazing, you know? Uh, they made sure I didn't lose a pound. I'm very weight conscious. I got to stay up on my weight. So the extra food, thank you so much. Um, drinks, water, whatever, anything that we needed, they were there. They were amazing. So Akila, I'm just going to hone in on something. You have to keep weight on? Yeah, uh, I got to keep a certain weight. So I compete within a certain weight class. And uh, so I had to stay, we were doing some tough stuff, a lot of physical work. And uh, I started to lose a little bit of weight. And I was like, hey, man, I need extra portions. I got to keep this weight up. And they're like, yeah, we'll get it to you. So they were amazing. Oh, that's really, really nice. What's it work working with Phil and seeing Phil every day? I mean, amazing star. Jessica, you already gave him a love shout out. Let's hear it. Yeah, I think Phil's amazing. Um, and Luis, I mean, I think that she is definitely half of Phil too. So it's like Phil gets all the camera time, but Luis on the other side, man, she's just, I got to sit and talk with her on one of the challenges and just talking with her and feeling, you can feel the passion that they have for this project and the love and the respect that they have for the show and the people in trades. Um, and so that whole team together is just remarkable. And, and they're just wholehearted people that you want to work for. You want them to, you know, you just, you just want to do a good job and you want to represent them well. You want to represent the team well and the show well. Um, but meeting them, you're like, these people are brilliant. They're brilliant. They're humble. They're kind. They're thoughtful. Um, you know, and, and I think that speaks volumes to what they're trying to achieve. And for those that don't know, Phil is the executive producer and host, Phil Keegan. And then Jessica, you mentioned someone else. Uh, Luis, his wife. Mm -hmm. So she's actually another producer on the show. Uh, and she's there every day. You know, it, it, they're a, a dynamic duo of, I mean, insurmountable. It's just, they're just phenomenal. Great. Right. I'm going to, I'm going to second what Jessica is saying that, you know, behind every great man, there's a great, great woman that's steering everything and making it right. And I have to say, Louise, what, like the two of them work together, Phil, you know, without his passion, without his dedication, none of us would be here, but yes, um, she, she deserves some credit too. Um, his, his wife is amazing. She keeps everything on tab and everything running smoothly. And I, I often hear him saying, did I get everything right, babe? Uh, did I get everything yeah. right? <laughs> you know, in that way. And she would just like, yep, you're good to go. Or no, we got to do it again. And so the two of them are like two halves of a whole. And without the two of them supporting their mission, their passion, none of us would be where we are today. And yeah. I and I, to both. Luis, too. 
I know Phil gets a lot of the credit because he he's the screen. He's the face of it. But Luis is an athlete, too. At one point, we were doing Dude, I can't even like (laughs) she is such a a powerful woman. You know, she's not a large woman. She's just powerful in her mind and her strength. Um, You know, and even she runs some of the challenges. She tests some of the challenges, too. And you see her and you're like, oh, she's so beautiful and sweet and kind. But really, like she will throw you down in a fight man, or a wall (laughs) sit. A wall sit. If you challenge her to a wall sit, you will die. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And you will lose. You will lose. you know? I knew better than to even attempt any challenge with her. Right? Like to, <laughs> yeah. I'm good. I appreciate it, but I'm not going to go up against the best of the best. Yeah. But we do love you, Phil. We do love you, Phil and Luis. <laughs> and actually, yeah. uh, Akila challenged Phil to, was it like a three push up contest? What was it, Akila? At a one, one point. Arm, a one arm. A one arm push up. Yeah. yeah. We were in a challenge waiting around <laughs> and Akila. And I was like, in between Lewis, Luis and Phil, I, I'm not touching any of that. I'll yeah, let Akila and another person do it, but I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I tried and I was like, eh, I'm dying. <laughs> but Akila showed him what's up. Akila, Phil, Phil and Louise are amazing. You know, I wouldn't have made it on that show without them for real. I wouldn't have made it on that show at all without them. Um, but there, you know, other people on that show, they're amazing too. Natalie, oh man. She'll like reach in and grab your whole heart and just rip it out and have you in tears. You know, Jenny, Jenny's amazing. Cynthia's amazing. Alex is amazing. You know, everybody's amazing on that show. But yeah, Phil and Louise, I wouldn't have made it without you guys. Uh, What beautiful shout outs and commentary. I can't wait to watch the show now. It's got to be hard to leave it. How are you guys feeling? Did you, you know, it's almost sounds like when you leave the military, a little bit of that emptiness. Do you go through that after the show? No, I went through. What did I just do? What was that? <laughs> what did I just get done doing? It was like it was it was you're there and then it's over. It's like, what was that? Was it that surreal? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, was, I think um, the biggest. Oh, go ahead, Kenji. Um, sorry. Uh, yeah, it was like a moment in time where did that just happen? And every so often now, until the show came up, it runs, you know, once or twice uh, in a week, every other day, I would just, I relive some of the moment or it just goes through my mind. I'm like, did, did I do that? Or, oh man, I could have done it differently. Or, oh man, oh, just give me another chance at it. Just give me another chance, you know? <laughs> and it, I think it's going to be forever a part of our lives. All 60 of us now are going to be more, but it's just something that we all can relate to that it was just a unique experience in this one time in our life that it's never going to go away. Yeah. And I think, you know, to reference what Karen said is that in reference to the military, it's like you do this thing every day is structured, you know what you're doing. And then when we get done filming, they're like, okay, you can go home now. And we're like, wait, what? Um, okay. And you know, you come off such a momentous high of doing the show and then you go home and you can't tell anybody you can't, you can't allude to anything. You can't, you know, it's like, you have to kind of keep it on the down low. So for so long, it's like, we, you enjoyed it, you loved it, but you had to kind of keep it quiet. So it was definitely a transition for me. I think I struggled with a little bit cause I was like so excited, but you can't express it. And so now seeing the show actually getting aired is really awesome because now you are excited. You can talk about it. You can share your experiences and you get to watch it back, which none of us have seen it, just the little clips. So it's, it's going to be pretty, pretty exciting to relive those moments again. Oh, that's exciting. I'm so happy for you to actually relive it and be able to talk to your family and friends about it and stay in touch with each other. I'm sure you tease each other a little bit. We do all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it's a military thing. I <laughs> So one last thing here, if we, I'm checking on time here to make sure we're, we're still good. Um, one last thing I want to ask, it's pretty, it's very inspiring to hear each and every one of you accept this challenge, challenge yourself to apply, challenge yourself to go through this, really push yourself to be the best you can be and a best teammate you can be. What are the tips that you would give all the other veterans listening to this in the, as far as why they should apply for it and what they'll get out of it? 
Well, the worst thing they could say is no. Right. And you can't fail if you don't try. You might as well try. One of my mentors out here, Allison Savage, used to say no is the first step to yes. Yep. I'm going to have to say that if you are a veteran um, and you apply, I think you're going to get a better chance of getting on the show than somebody who's not, because chances are you're more disciplined uh, to follow through with your action. Meaning the moment that you accept that you're going to apply for it and you get accepted, there's lots of physical training, lots of mental training, you know, the paperwork and things that you have to go through. And in the, if you're a veteran, you have already gone through most of those rigorous training to get you through the final result. And a lot of people, you know, like Jessica said, thousands of people that apply and a lot of them fail because they didn't follow through. And I would say that if you're a veteran and you want to be on the show, you should go ahead and apply because I know your training is going to carry you through to the final process where you have a really good shot at being selected. Yeah, I, th I think that's a really good point, Kenji. Um, I think if you're a veteran and you're interested in applying for the show, do it a, a, a million times over. Apply, 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 keep applying. But I think for me, one of the things in referencing my time in the military is I felt like this was what I needed. You know, I miss, I miss that time in the military. I miss my friends. I miss the challenges, you know, getting up every day and literally throwing your heart and soul out there physically, mentally grinding, working hard. And that was something that I missed in the military doing it with a team, you know? And so when I applied, that was one of the things I was looking forward to because it did. And when you're in it, it does bring you back to the military. It does, you know, you think about, oh, how did I do that back then? How did they teach me how to do this? How did I work through that problem? And that was one thing that I missed in my life. And since doing the show, it brought back all those feelings of accomplishment and growth and teamwork. It brought back that all again. And it was, if you're missing that, just apply and try because it's, it will change. It will change you. Beautifully said. It's almost like you're scripted, Jessica. Ken, <laughs> <Kayla>. <laughs> well, I do talk a lot, so <laughs> I talk all the time. <laughs> but yeah, no, it really was something that was absolutely remarkable. And, you know, I, I did almost four years in the army and it was at such a young, I was so young, but it made such an impression on my life that I carried that with me. i never forgot that. And to do the show, it just brought back all of those memories and all that stuff that's embedded to in you, you get to express it, you get to do those things again. And it just really, it, it's just, it's just amazing. That was great. Kenji, are you going to start an overall line? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I only have one color. Will. He probably I will. One color. I'm not sure job. everybody's going to want that. <laughs> but it's, it's a very focused choice. You have to admit. Yeah. yeah. He'll still learn it. He'll master it. He'll leave it to somebody and then he'll go back on a TV show and be like, oh my God, I did that one. <laughs> <laughs> Tailoring. Yep. Well, I want to keep supporting you. How do we cheer each one of you on? Jessica, how do we support your business? Kenji, your work. Akilo, shouting out for you as you move up the jujitsu ranks here. Well, you already have one at all. Give us uh, a little way to follow you and, and, and continue supporting you because we're all so proud of you. Let's start with you, Jessica. What's your business? Um, so my business is fine line remodeling. My husband, I got to give a lot of credit to my husband because he started it years ago. Um, and then I jumped on. So we're a local contractor here in Austin, Texas. Uh, and we specialize in kitchen remodels. Perfect. Kenji. Uh, I think I'm going to start pretty soon within maybe six, eight months from now, um, a tree cutting service. And it's probably going to be like no go tree service because <laughs> okay. in the military nobody could pronounce my last name so they always call me petty officer no go you know um so yeah i, I guess that's what i'm going to continue with and uh i, I know that you the veteran veterans uh, navy military all that is always going to be behind uh, me and the show is definitely going to showcase some of my skills and get the word out there uh, of who i am so it's going to be amazing just to continue the journey on 
Great way to capitalize on that. Great thinking, Kenji. Akila? Oh, I got a lot of moving pieces going on right now. You know, as a firefighter, I got a lot of time on my hands. So I just had my bathroom renovated and the guy that came in did my tile. I asked him, can I get a job? So uh, I'll be starting that in a little bit. Um, yeah, as far as fighting, I fight all the time. I compete all the time. You can catch me on my Instagram. Uh, if you're in Minnesota, come by the gym. We can uh, do some things. And uh, yeah. Well, my in-laws are from Minnesota, so I'm going to stop by. Oh, yeah. Jessica, are you going to say something? <laughs> yeah, I think, um, so my husband is a veteran also. Mm-hmm. And I think one yeah. thing that needs to get a little bit of light is just the trades. <clears throat> you know, how supportive the trades are for veterans. You know, we know what hard work is. We know what it takes. Excuse me. And <clears throat> sorry, I just choked on some coffee. That's okay. I just did the same. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yeah, no. But no, I think that there need, definitely needs to be a, a light on uh, veterans getting into the trades. I mean, it's such a great field and we really need the manpower. We need help. Um, and I think anybody who's been in the military understands that it's a lot of hard work, but it is, it is very rewarding to you. And so veterans, if you're interested in getting into the trades, you could probably walk up to any business and, and they would hire you on the spot. So do that. I mean, it's, it's a great skill and we definitely need more people like veterans out there doing this hard work. I agree. The trades are, uh, we do not value them enough. That's extraordinary. We walk into a house, we admire like Akilah, you're saying the tiling, real craftsmanship, et cetera. I'm throwing a shout out to my nephew, James Wolf out there. He just joined the Carpenter Union. Really proud oh, of him. Yep. Yeah. Just graduated from high school and he's going down that trade. I'm really, really proud of him. So, you know, it's really, it's really awesome because veterans, they have this skill set. They know what it takes. And it's that, that edge that, you know, they'll have in life if they keep going in the trades, you can make good money. You can have a great life. You know, it's, it's something that if you put your mind to it um, and have the discipline, you can really build a life for yourself, you know, with no, you know, you don't have to spend $200,000 on a college degree. You can go, you get your hands on training and you can have a good life for yourself. And I feel like there's not enough light on that. So kudos to your nephew that just did that. He's going to have a great life, you know? And it's like, we need, we need to put light on that because it's, it, it's dying. And, you know, there's so many people in the trades that have a wealth of knowledge that we have no one to pass it to because they're, we're missing that generation gap. And so, you know, I hope that we can get more light on that. The show is a great reason for that. You know, this network is a great reason for that. So we just need to bring some more attention to it. What an art form, right? It gives you so much pride to see someone excelling in a job. I think that's what I loved mm-hmm. about the military is you, when you see someone really good at their position, you're just like, I love seeing that, right? It is ins- inspirational. And you guys certainly sound like you had a ton of fun. And of course, I just want to mention this. We can all share secrets here because we're military. But if you can, uh, Betty was a little curious. We're just wondering if a veteran won the show this year. Can you share that? I'm kidding. I know you can't. <laughs> <laughs> but my money is on you guys for sure. Um, I just wanted to say you want to um, give a shout out to the crew. If she can bring us all back together after the final show has aired, the final episode. Yeah. And maybe Please we can talk me. about the season. Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah. That would be so amazing. Yeah. Yeah. We could probably talk about a lot more. and and there's gonna be stuff to talk about let me tell you yeah well we're gonna push out in our veterans and media entertainment network every weekly episode we're gonna shine a light on you all make sure that you continue talking about you and cheering you on regardless of how it comes out you're already one from everything you've shared with us today just thank you you know having the courage to just jump in right and just try and push yourself and then also the takeaways and the fact that you're also sharing you know military is about each one teach one right it's the mentorship yeah. it's shining Correct. light right taking away a little bit of the the mystery of the next step and saying here i can help you so yeah. uh, thank you for doing that and i would love to have you come back and speak to our group and share your experiences so people can learn and grow and from your work so it's exciting yeah 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 very exciting well let's thank see. you so much Karen. Oh, Jessica, what a pleasure to meet you all. And thank you so much. Thank you, Kenji. Thank you, Akila. And yeah, also, thank you. Yeah, it's been fun. I've learned a lot today. And I'm so glad that we all share this love of the trades. And the show really highlights that. And we need to continue pushing that. So we're all behind you. 
Uh, thank you, everybody else, for being here today. We can't wait to watch CBS Tough as Nails with Emmy Award winning executive producer and host Phil Keegan premiering on the CBS network on Sunday, July 2nd at 8 p.m. Eastern. Following the premiere, the show will continue to air on Fridays and Sundays at 8 p.m. Eastern. And I know our veteran group is going to be pushing it out and highlighting these three fantastic veterans, Kenji, Jessica, and Akila. Uh, and I'm really, really proud to get to know you and become friends. Thank you so much for being here today.